Jamie here. Jamie here. Hang on one second. Hope everyone's doing outstanding. May 24, 2024, 5, 24, 24. The last Friday before the extended Memorial Day holiday weekend. Hope everyone's doing outstanding. Take a look at the markets. The SPY dropped nearly three quarters of a percent yesterday. I was looking, I, I was talking about it on the rant yesterday afternoon. Everybody tries to time these tops and name the tops, right? And I, I talked about the infamous Alibaba top, right? Alibaba IPO, huge market capitalization was one of the biggest IPOs in history. And there's been all these moves over the years that are symbolic of a top. And then what happens yesterday, NVIDIA, well, not yesterday, the day before NVIDIA post one of the better quarters uh, that, that you could imagine, at least if you had painted a picture of this is what NVIDIA needed to report and a uh, guidance um, and all that fun stuff. And you said that that's what they needed to do. And they did it. And, and then they had the 10 for one split. So if you had told me the stock was up 9% and then the market would be down three, well, the S&P would be down three quarters, three, and, three quarters of a percent, I would say, no, that's probably highly unlikely, but that's what happened. So uh, today, NVIDIA is gapping up again, up nearly t uh, 12 bucks in the pre-market, up near 1050. And do we sell the gap? Do we, does, is the market going to reverse the morning gains? Definitely going to be interesting to see how today plays out. It's a long holiday weekend. Going to be lots of headlines around this NVIDIA NVIDIA top. I'm sure there'll be more chatter, especially if we get a reversal in the market sell-off. So watching, uh, if you look at my chart here on the, on the SPY, the 525, let's see if I can post it in here. It actually came up and hit that support for somehow. <laughs> uh, so we'll see if that holds today. Um, on the flip side, 529 look like resist, resistance. So if we get up there, maybe we can break through. Um, but nothing has really changed, right? It just seems like people use it as an excuse to sell. The other indicator I was watching over the last couple of weeks was that amount of stocks over the 50-day moving average on the S&P. That, that dipped back under 50%. So probably want to see that kind of either hold here or reverse. Otherwise, maybe there's going to be some kind of pullback. I thought maybe 540, 545 on the SPY. Certainly not going to rule out the possibility that Maybe this is, we have a little weakness here, a little pullbacks and profit taking. So, especially on the big run we had, May started out with only one red day up until the, the last couple of sessions, right? So the, you know, uh, one, two, what was two, two, I mean, well, three red days on the, on the SPY right now, if you include yesterday. So individual names, and I always talk, you know, my new acronym is ABH, right? Always be hedging. Um, I'm not, I, I'm, you know, I'm in call positions, so at the same token, I want to be able to alleviate some of the premium kill on some of these moves to the downside. So, you know, I always talk about some of these, the, the chip names. I look at Broadcom, AVGO, MDB. Those are typically my favorite names to uh, at least play for short-term downside. Weekly strikes just to uh, take some prop, make some profits to offset some of the losses on the, on the calls. So, uh, MD, so Snow reported great earnings uh, on Wednesday, gapping higher uh, yesterday morning, and then it just reversed all those gains after the open. So in you, you take a look at names that would be uh, sympathy moves on that would be would be MDB. So I th I actually thought it would trade much lower than it did. It didn't, but got some of those speculative puts at the open, and then I got the Broadcom puts, and you know Broadcom was up near one almost a fourteen thirty. I looked and I said, they look pretty uh, expensive on a risk war basis considering they expired in, in 24 hours. But I thought if we do reverse and we've had some of these, you know, sell the news events where the market goes green to red, which is my least favorite scenario, um, that some of these names pay off pretty well on the put side. So uh, Broadcom actually p paid off. So I was able to lock some of my puts in for over 100% and then it kept uh, dipping 1378 or so. Locked some more in for a little over 400%. I still held held a couple into today because I think if we do get a reversal, a Broadcom AVGL can test that 1350 handler. Or so so that's kind of the thought process there. Same with MDB. It's not going to take much for it to get down to, to 340 or so. Closed down 1.7% yesterday. Do I have the right chart up? I think I do. Yeah. With most of those losses coming after the noon hour, similar to what happened to, with the market. So still like that one for um you know spec puts i'm not going to add anything today but i'll continue to look for that one as a possible hedge play if we do have more weakness next week so some of the other names i like to the upside 
Uh, GPCR, which actually closed up over 5% yesterday, despite the market weakness, that's three straight sessions of gains. They'll have an update on their uh, phase two data by the end of June. The issue with GPCR, and you know, it's a recent IPO, the stock was only up near 75 or so in, in the fall. They, they have good data, but they have a lot of adverse effects. So the big you know, overhang with some of these GLP-1 names is the, you know, the, the adverse effects, nausea, um, you know, diarrhea, things like that. And if you start looking at their data, it's, it's a, a large, uh, large percentage of the folks who, who are on, uh, different, uh, cohorts, you know, the 50 milligrams, I, I got to go look at the dosage, but as you, as you step up the dosage, the adverse effects are, pr they're pretty meaningful, but you know, at the, at the same, at the same time, I, if you, a folks are looking for a solution for, for diabetes. And there, I think there was just a report this morning around uh, another one in regards to cardiovascular events with GLP-1 drugs. Uh, GPCR is going to fit a niche, a niche, niche, however you pronounce it. So I, I, I think they're going to report great data uh, in, in the coming weeks before the end of June. And I think there's a name that trades up into the uh, 60s and beyond, even uh, despite the adverse effects. And it's funny, NVO, Oh no, it was Roche came out with their data last week with Camelot and they, they didn't, it wasn't as, uh, they didn't really talk too much about the cohorts, the different dosage, uh, dosing, and then they didn't talk about the adverse effects, which are the two key points of GLP-1 drugs, right? The higher the dosage, you want to see if, how those adverse effects are. And rants for other days, but really like GPCR uh, in the coming weeks, the, the calls are expensive on the June strikes only because of the, the potential data and binary event. Hopefully that data comes out soon. Um, I, I talked about a line on the watch list, uh, well, put post on watch list yesterday morning, talked a little bit about it on the rant. Uh, sells off nearly 3%. It's setting up here. It's almost got a pincher. So that's when, uh, let's see, the ADX and the PPO come together. I can post them in here. But uh, at some point, it's right at the lower Bollinger Band as well. Lower Bollinger Band's 252.46. It closed at 252.39, so seven cents below the lower Bollinger Band. I think it sets up uh, for a nice squeeze bounce play. You know, I've talked about it. it's, a, it's a fundamental play. No debt, 900 million dollars in cash, 150 million accelerated share buyback program. This is a name that's not going away. They have a huge international growth story, story and runway. Really like a line. So at some point, I'd love to add some. Some strikes. I was looking yesterday. Thankfully, I didn't pull the trigger. But but you're looking what six straight sessions to the downside from 285. I think it offers a nice bounce off opportunity. So that's a line. I'm oh, not going to talk about EMVX. Was it down nine percent yesterday? Uh, it's down on the week. I've uh, had nothing but peace and quiet since I blocked all the folks who were attacking me on, on FinTwit. Um, I'm all about having uh, ad, uh, folks who give me different information, right? So I. I'm not, I'm not going to agree with everybody. I'm fin that's just how it works, right? I'm not going to agree with everybody. Everybody has an opinion, but then once you cross the line, that's where, uh, you know, I, at some point I have to say, I'm going to block these folks. Uh, they had conferences, right? I guess the Riley conference this week, they also had JP, was it JP or Morgan Stanley? So I'm not going to talk about ENVX. Uh, some of the other names that I've been watching, uh, hang on one second, folks. Sorry about that, folks. A uh, couple other names I'm watching, uh, you know, IIPR and the cannabis names, they fell off yesterday. IIPR, I think it was down 3%. The, the bad is my June strikes have, have went into the red despite being up nearly a, a, over 100% starts week. The good thing is the July strikes are pretty inexpensive on risk reward basis. So I may look for some 125s there. Fiverr under, I keep talking about that 200 day moving average, finally broke through that end of day right so it was 25 40 from for most of the day into the one o'clock hour and then just sold off still like that one for upside i robot i mean not not much i can say or do there probably needs a catalyst maybe it's going to be another ceo uh, buy maybe a little bigger than his uh, most recent one and i think that's it don't forget folks it's a holiday weekend so uh, markets closed on monday um not that it's going to do too much for premiums, but folks who are expecting five sessions next week in regards to, to options, just be aware of that. And uh, that's it, folks. Uh, if I, I'll be on audio later for a rant, but if I don't, uh, if you don't hear from me, have a great holiday weekend. 
Let's have a great day. Rock and roll.